doing some more of these formulaic, and these are actually called literal equations. Why are they called literal? Because there are letters in them. So there are literal equations because we're solving an equation for one of the letters, and that's just the name of them. They're kind of strange, but once you get the hang of it, they're fine. So you're solving for m. E equals mc squared. What famous mathematician, scientist came up with this? Einstein. Yes? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. E equals mc squared. Solve for m. What do you do on both sides, Tamara? Both sides. How do you solve for m? We're going to circle that. That's what we want. You divide by what? Oh, no. We wouldn't. Okay, hey, one thing. Shannon's going to answer this. One thing, one golden rule. You never divide by the thing you're trying to solve. You just leave that thing there. It's like a buried treasure 20 feet under. You can't get at it. You've got to move everything out of the way to get at it. Think of it that way. It's stuck there. You can't move it. Don't touch it. Leave it. Get everything else out of the way. Sure, uh, Shannon. What did I see? See what? That's what I thought you said. So our answer is simply this. What? What's our answer, Gabby? Exactly. It's just that simple, folks. Done. Okay? And all I did was, I could have put the M over here, I just flipped them around, commutative property. Okay? So that's, that's your most basic one. This should be pretty easy for you, hopefully. Um, this one here, V equals 3K over T. This is more difficult because the T is under, you know, it's in the denominator. So we still are looking for this. How are we going to find it? Now, in this case, we might have to move this around. I just said never move these around. I'm contradicting myself. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Stephen, there is a case when you move it around, and that's when it's stuck under here. When it's on the bottom of a fraction, then you do move it around because you can't deal with it under there. Okay? So, exception to the rule I just said. Stephen, what do we do? Multiply by 3K? Yeah, multiply by, no, multiply by not 3K because that won't do anything except by T. By T, right? That's what I said. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Multiply by T because whenever there's a denominator, I thought you said that, whenever there's a denominator, you multiply it, right? So you crop cancel it out, and then it's on this side, we've got TV equals 3K, and we're almost there now. We're looking for T, what do we do on both sides? Divide by V. Divide by V, right? So once you've done that little trick, you're all set, and there we go, 3K over V. We, whenever you've got a denominator of a fraction, multiply everything by that denominator. Okay? That's the simplest thing. Even if it says solve for that. Yeah. What do we do? We're looking for F. How do we get F out of there? What do we do? Remember what I said about denominators? What do we do with denominators? We already we want to eliminate them. Multiply by what? What is the denominator here? E plus F. Exactly. Good job. E plus F. And so we end up with D times E plus F equals, equals what? One. Equals one. Good. We still got to get that F out of there. How do we do it? It's still way in there. It's stuck. I don't know how to get it. Subtract by D. Well, we could. I don't know anything else other than doing this. Distribute D E plus D F equals one. Now I'm going to bring it back up here. What do we do now? Now it should be starting to make sense. Devon, we're almost there. You can see it. What do we do on both sides? Austin? Divide by D. Nope. You subtract by D on both sides. Okay? So we end up with uh, DF equals 1 minus DE. And we're almost there now. What do we do on both sides, Mickey? Divide by uh, D. Just D. Because we're looking for F, right? Yeah. 1 minus DE over D. And that was a kind of crazy, that was a hard one. That was a very tricky one. Practice that. These are actual practice questions practice from practice your book. Stuff. Number 26. Coordinate it. Look at your book. Try it on your own and then see if you can do it. If you get stuck, look at YouTube stuff and then do it over and over until you get it. It shouldn't take you long. If you get into the groove, you'll be fine. G equals 40N plus 20K. What are we solving for? G. K. Guyana, what is our first step? We're going for K. We have to subtract 40N. 40N, yeah. That's right. That cancels. And we get G minus 40N equals 20K. And we're almost there with that one, right? Yeah. Both sides, what do we got to do, Taylor? To get K, what's in the way? Okay, yeah, it's hard angle. What do you got there? 20 is in the way, what do we do? 5 by 20. 5 by 20. And there we go, G minus 40N over 20. Done. Equals K. That's it, folks. So you got to practice these. Practice them over and over and over. This quarter F, we're looking for F. This is what we're trying to find. What do we got to clear? First things first, what do we do? We have to get 
We need to get asked. Let's clear the easiest thing. Taylor, what's the easiest thing to clear out of the way? Uh, two. 2H, yeah. You guys, be thorough when you say it. It's not just 2, it's 2H. So it's R minus 2H equals negative a quarter F. All right. Now we're almost there, but we still have that tricky negative a quarter, that pesky negative a quarter, that pesky fraction. We haven't heard from today, Natalia, what do we do with that negative a quarter? Because that's obviously the demon we got to get out of the way, right? What do we do with it? Whoa. Almost. Multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one quarter? Four. So, right. So, we multiply everything by negative four, okay, over one. Negative four over one, that clears the negative. See? And guess what? We get uh, negative four times r minus 2h equals, now this cancels, right? Boom. Okay. Equals f, and you're done. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Good job. Anybody have a question on that? Thank you. you Got to practice these. You only get them with your practice. Them. It's all about you guys doing them. Maybe we should spend more class doing them. I don't know. But then you get stuck, and then you know. So we have to do this. What do you think? What do you, what do you say, Cameron? I don't know. I speak to the great Lord of Cameras and appeal to him or her to find out what is it that will help these students. I don't know, man. Math God. Whatever. <laughs> values. There are two answers for x here. The unknown x. We don't know what it is. There are actually two possibilities. What are they? Negative and positive. Negative and positive, right? Because the absolute value of positive 6, right, equals what? 6. What else? What is our other possible answer? Yeah? The absolute value of negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is also 6. So there are two answers for this. That means x equals 6 or negative 6. There are two answers in this solution set. That's the tricky thing with absolute values. There's a positive and a negative case. Let me give you another example. Um, which, I mean, basically, if you understand that, you're in good shape. Because you'll get questions like this. x plus 2 equals 12. Well, the same principle here. You just have to solve everything around the absolute value first, and then move from there. So, Taylor, what would I do on both sides? Don't touch this. Remember, that x marks the spot. It's dug 100 feet down. You can't move it. Minus so, two. minus 2 on both sides. Good job. And minus 2 there, minus 2 there. Absolute value x equals 10. Now we're going back to the basics, what we just had, like this question. Uh, and what do we do? We have two cases. What, is our, what are our two answers, Marshall? Uh, uh, absolute value of 10. X equals? What? Talia, what can our answer be for X here? What can our, <laughs> the absolute value of 10 can equal 10, right? Sorry, that, that's a bit, yeah, that's a bit what we call wonky. There we go. 10, and what other number can go in there, Talia? Negative 10. Negative 10. Good. Good stuff. Two answers. So all we really need to do is manipulate the equation so that it looks back to the simple case, and then you have your positive and negative case, and you're done. Finito. Fantastico. Absolute value of m. Oh, this is number 25 over 4 equals 5. Okay, good. What do we do on both sides? We see a fraction. We got a denominator. We got a hold on it. We're being proactive here. We're like, I know how to deal with that. I'm not afraid of fractions. So boom, go get it, Tamara. Tell, tell us what you do. Um, you multiply exactly, both sides, yeah. no problem. And what do we get? This cancels, boom, boom. We love doing that. I love that. Just kicking its butt. There you go. Absolute value of m equals 20. And now we're back to the same old problem, right back here. The same old problem that we started with, but two cases, positive and negative. Brian Siegel, what do we get? Positive and negative. M equals what? M equals either. M would equal a positive 20. Or? Or negative. Absolutely. Absolute value. Absolute value. Absolute answer. 